Hello everyone, it's Leo and it's time to talk about episode 26 from Tropical Reach Precure. I had no idea what to expect from this episode and I was very surprised with it. It was very chill and it was very cute. I found it very adorable and this episode had something that I really like and I feel like Tropical Rouge can do this sometimes, most times it hits and I feel like this is one of them, which is it's able to work with all of the characters and give attention to all of the characters in an episode. I feel like Tropical Rouge can hit this, can hit this mark most times, but sometimes it falls flat in characters like Sango, maybe Asuka, but in this episode, they were able to hit all of the characters very nicely, especially Sango. I was very surprised with Sango's presence in this episode. It didn't really feel like the same Sango we met at the start of the season. And I really liked her presence in this episode. I found it very nice. And the things I complained two episodes ago about Asuka not being prominent and not being present very much in her own episode or in an episode that was supposed to be more a little bit more focused on her were basically uh, different this time. I feel like there were certain focuses on Asuka in this episode and I really liked that and we were able to meet her father. Oh my god, I really liked seeing him. I really loved his presence in this episode as well. So we had a very simple plot. There was a girl, Shiori, uh, I really love this girl's design, she looks super cute, and she wanted to create an astronomy club, people weren't interested, and so the Tropical Club started to help her, and they created, uh, there was going to be a meteor shower, and so uh, they created a whole event for the school to go so they could help her gather members for the astronomy club and also create a great activity, because that's all uh, what Tropical Club is about. They always create different, but very interesting activities for everybody to enjoy and experience. Um, so I think there's not much to talk about in terms of plot of the episode, but uh, I want to highlight some of the stuff. I feel like this episode had a very different pacing from what we have in, in Tropical Rouge in general. I feel like Tropical Rouge is very chaotic, the energy is always up there, and in this episode it wasn't. I feel like the narrative in Tropical Rouge usually follows Monatsu's energy. And in this episode, she was very energetic, but the plot and the narrative, they were not following her energy at all. I felt like I was more or less remembering the energy of healing the Precure, you know? So I feel like that's why I believe I felt this episode was a one-off in Tropical Rouge, because it was very different from the usual energy of Tropical Rouge that we have. At least for me, I had this feeling while watching. Did you feel more or less the same? Because, look, we are into a batch of episodes that we have in all Precure seasons, which is the episodes are more chill, more laid back, because we're onto something brewing for the power-up to happen. And the power-up's happening usually like around episode 30 something. And so the batch of episodes after the mid-season cure joins and before the, the power-up happens, it's, the episodes are usually more laid back, and this was another one of those episodes, but I also feel like this is, a, like, those fillers are usually a nice way of handling and, you know, pointing out parts of the personalities of the girls, and I feel like that's how, that's why I believe this episode excelled so much. Matsu was her usual energetic self, always wanting to help people, she's always very excited to help people, she's always, you know, living her tropical life, and Sango being the cute self that she is, but she, in this episode, I feel like she interacted more with the world around her, and usually she takes a step back and lets Manatsu do the handling. In this episode, not really. She was always there interacting, and she was always trying to give solutions and create, uh, you know, solutions for the situations they were in. I really liked that. And there was a moment that I was not expecting Sango to step up and say something, which was when Manatsu was giving melon pond to Shiori, and then uh, they were all sharing melon ponds and everything, and Sango was the one to share a melon pond with the director. And not only share a melon pond with the director, invite the director to the event they were creating. 
I was not expecting to see Sun go red at that moment, and I really, really liked that. We also had Minori, and Minori is very easy to work with, I believe, for the, the creators and the writers. I feel like she's very easy to work with. And in this episode, for example, right at the start we had Shiori explaining the meteor showers, what they are and what they actually represent. And uh, Minori was like, uh, this is their last breath of life and something. Because she is a writer, she is a poet, she writes uh, narratives, but she also writes poets. We saw poetry, she also writes poetry. We saw that in the episode, uh, in the body switch episode. And so, um, she is an artist. So her way of thinking is different. So I really, really like that. Obviously, Laura, I love when they go all out with Laura's personality. In the last few episodes, I feel like they were a little tame with her, and now she's able to shine again, being the cocky princess she is. I loved that moment, which was like, oh, I'm the one that's shining the most. Oh, I'm the one they're paying the most attention to. They were shining, and she's like, thankfully, they're all gonna look at us. I love that Laura energy so much. And... There's also, obviously, Asuka. Asuka was the one who stepped up and called her father. And um, I'm gonna go back to the narrative thing later, but it was very interesting how she was able to, uh, like, how they were able to integrate her father into the narrative of this episode because we only heard about him. We don't know much about him, but it was very nice seeing him. It was very nice the way she explained uh, what he was doing. And it was also kind of a nice way to you know, get a little bit of Japanese folklore, especially to us who are not Japanese, so we can learn more about uh, some of their folklore. It's always nice uh, when they put this into anime. And I really liked the way she was talking about her father and explaining what she, he was doing for us who don't understand much about the culture, to understand maybe children who don't know about this culture, to understand it. And I loved how Minori was like, oh, this is fishy. This, this is not gonna work. <laughs> But it was very nice how it worked out. And I'm gonna be very honest, I like the way it was played out, I got super emotional when the sky was clear. Like really, I got really, really emotional. And another thing that really got me emotional in this episode was the villains. I am saying this every single time. I love the Tropical Rouge villains. And I really believe they are one of the strongest groups of villains in the Precure franchise. I absolutely love them. I'm crazy about them. You know, Elda interacting with Shongiri. Shongiri was cooking and Elda was like, you know what a meteor shower is? And he was like, no. And, then, and she's like, I'm a child and I know it. <laughs> I love that. And Numeri, you know, getting with her and patting her. Oh my God, that was so adorable. And then Butler in this episode was a little scarier than usual. Like he seems to be angry that they're not being able to gather motivation. I wonder if that's gonna change something. And uh, the way the villain part played out was very interesting. Like the way Numeri wasn't really caring about, you know, uh, being very strict towards Elda. She wasn't really making that much of an importance to that. So she was able to go to the attack. She had to attack because of, you know, slacking off with Elda. And after that, it was very, very nice that Elda was the one, you know, to call the villains. And she called Chongire to go watch the meteor shower. And she got Numeri because she knew Numeri was going to be there attacking. And so, like, she called Numeri so that she, they could all watch the meteor shower together. That was probably my favorite part of the episode. I found that very sweet, and I really liked it. I Like, the way they were very emotional towards that. Uh, and I feel like the villains of the season, they're very, they're, they're relatable with their ways of lack of motivation and slacking off, wanting to focus on the things they're good at, wanting to focus on the things they do and not really wanting to focus on their obligations. I mean, who can't relate to that? I really like the way it plays out. And I also uh, loved the moment that they got emotional with the, the meteor shower because I felt like we can really see more to their personalities and I cannot wait to learn more about their stories. I really can't. And I believe that another highlight of the episode was Asuka with her father. 
Uh, I really liked their interaction and I loved how focused her father was with the other men who were uh, playing the, the drums while he was there uh, praying uh, for the sky to open up and they could see the meteor shower. Uh, I really liked that and they, like Asuka, <laughs> she, the way she was dealing with her dad and she was like feeling a little sh ashamed, you know, it's very her. And I love the way they work with Asuka's personality sometimes, most times, in those little bit, bits of scenes, like, and her facial expressions, they are always on point. So, this was a very sweet episode, in my opinion. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, obviously, she already reminded me a lot of Hikaru from Star Twinkle, without the big energetic personality obviously she is very different but her passion for the stars really reminded me of hikaru and this was a very sweet and entertaining episode endearing episode with a very different type of narrative i feel like uh compared to the other tropical rouge episodes so it's like a, an episode that kind of stands out if you think about it anyways uh, next week, we are going to have an episode in the aquarium. I'm very curious because people are unmotivated and the the preview didn't show anything. They didn't show who attacked, how the attack was. We don't know. And I'm so curious. So, this was my view on episode 26 from Tropical Rouge Precure. I want to take this little time to thank the members of the Magical Cinema channel. If you are a member, Thank you very, very much. I really, really appreciate your support. Thank you. And if you watched up to now, thank you so much as well. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.